Long enough to cover the subject and short enough to keep it interesting. Welcome to Out of My League. I'm Nick Diaz. Is Ole Miss the best team in the country? See, there are two conversations to be had when discussing which team is the best team in college football. Are they actually the best team? Or are they the team that has the best chance to beat Alabama? So, Alabama got outgained on the ground rushing by Florida by 169 yards. Florida outgained Alabama on the ground by 169 yards. Now, I'm not one to ever overreact to one week of football, NFL, college, high school, what have you. But I am one to overreact to 15 years of football. You know the last time Alabama was outrushed by an opponent by over 150 yards? 2007 against Arkansas. The fact that that stat actually exists, A, shows you how impressive of a coach Nick Saban really is and how great he really is, and B, it also shows you what it takes to still win championships consistently in college football and NFL football. Stop the run and run the ball. If you can't run the ball and stop the run, you can't win consistently. Now, if there's something that you haven't done in 15 years, can you correct it in two weeks. So my boss, he's a lifelong Alabama fan from Alabama, rooted for Alabama through good times and bad. And he's told me all summer long and even all season long that the one former Saban assistant that will finally beat Nick Saban is going to be Lane Kiffin, in his opinion. And the reason behind it is very simple. Because every former Saban assistant coach coaches scared against Nick Saban. They're intimidated by him. They try to imitate him because they worship him. Kiffin, on the other hand, that dude does not give a fuck. Like, you just see him talking in interviews. That dude don't give a fuck about anyone. And he especially doesn't care about Nick Saban. He doesn't even like Nick Saban. Now, he respects the hell out of Nick Saban. Who wouldn't? You'd be an idiot not to. And more importantly is that he knows that he's just as smart as Nick Saban when it comes to X's and O's. And you know what? Nick Saban knows it too. Hell, Saban even admitted Kiffin was the one to change his mind about the spread no-huddle offense. Saban was totally against it, saying, well, we need to change the rules of college football. And then a year later, what happens? He hires Lane Kiffin, and Kiffin convinces him, nope, you got to go spread up-tempo. Spread up-tempo. And Saban hated Kiffin's personality. They did not get along for one single solitary bit, so much so that he fired him before the national championship game in 2016. That's how much he hated him. But yet, even though he hated Kiffin, Saban still admitted, damn, Kiffin is right. Kiffin's the smartest guy in the room in this offensive meeting. He's right. There are several misconceptions about Nick Saban, and this is one of them. You know, curses on the sidelines and throws his, you know, hat at practice and freaks out and gets beat red and starts screaming and yelling. That's actually usually, what people don't know this, he usually does that when the team is doing well and he's trying to keep the team focused and not get lackadaisical because they're up on a team. Saban actually remains composed in bad situations for the most part because he knows that, hey, when the team's down, you pick them up. Very old coaching method that's been used for decades. Well, Ole Miss last year, Saban, after the Ole Miss game last year, which they won in a shootout, barely, Saban basically inadvertently admitted in a win that Lane Kiffin outcoached him. Um, It seemed like everything we did, though, they had an answer for. I don't know if they had our signals or what, but um, I'm I'm not – that's not anything unusual. That's basically Nick Saban saying – I just got out coached. Oh no, no, I didn't get out coached. Maybe they just, you know, had, you know, were stealing our signals or signs or whatever. Kiffin rebuttaled that and said, "Well, that's literally impossible for us to steal their signals or their signs because our offense goes so fast and so quickly that we call plays before their defense does." Even so, so much to the fact that Ole Miss Twitter posted a video of the Ole Miss offensive coordinator scripting the opening drive that Ole Miss scored upon the exact same play that they scored their first touchdown against Alabama last year, just to prove that, no, dude, you just got outcoached by Kiffin. You won, but you got outcoached. Admit it. Kiffin 
was the one to finally break Saban's habits. Kiffin is like the hot woman, the beautiful mistress that finally was able to seduce the mighty king and start a war. That's also a perfect analogy for someone like Lane Kiffin. But anyways, the real question is, is Ole Miss actually the best team or are they actually just the perfect team to beat Bama? Well, why can't it be both? I mean, look, when you phrase a question a certain way, you usually find out what the truth actually is, depending on how you phrase it. So, for example, if I were to ask you, what food is your biggest weakness? Some of you are probably thinking of an answer. Now, all right, let me change that for you. Let me ask you this. What is your favorite dessert? Mm-hmm. See? Some of you might be a little different. How you phrase it, what food is your biggest weakness versus what's your favorite dessert? Mm, see, that's different. So when you ask me, somebody the other day asked me, well, who's the, the best, you know, second best team, assuming Alabama's number one, who's the second best team in the SEC? And I thought, I was like, well, probably Georgia. That was my gut reaction. You know, their most well-rounded team, top to bottom, defense, offense, special teams, uh, schematics. They've updated their, their offense to some extent. They're getting better. So that was, it was like, yeah, Georgia. But then I started thinking, well, who's the team that can actually beat Alabama? And I immediately didn't hesitate. I said, well, Ole Miss. The one thing that Saban hates and always seems to struggle with is up-tempo offense and a top-tier dual-threat quarterback. Ole Miss does that better than anyone so far in college football this season. Now, I listened to the fourth quarter of the Alabama-Florida game in my car on satellite radio. It was on SEC Network, and the SEC Network on satellite radio, they were playing the Bama broadcast through the radio because I was on my way to Tiger Stadium to get in the press box. And John Parker Wilson, he's a commentator, a color commentator on the Alabama radio network, and they basically asked John Parker Wilson, former uh, former Alabama quarterback, you know, what's wrong with this with with this defense? You know, they can't stop the run. What's going on? And John Parker Wilson was just like, well, I, they're just they're just not physical, and they they don't know where to be. They're just bad discipline, and they're not physical. Literally, the exact opposite of any Nick Saban team that's ever played ever. And especially a team that broke a 15-year record that was held by Nick Saban's worst Alabama team ever. That's, that's, that's the record they break. Now look, Saban might in fact fix a 15-year record in two weeks' time. Because if he can't do it, then nobody can. And if somebody were be able to do it, then it would be Nick Saban. But if Alabama plays like they did this past Saturday against Florida, against Ole Miss in two weeks' time, Ole Miss will beat them. And I don't even think it'll be close. I think they'll win by two touchdowns if they play anything like they did against Florida in the second half. Now, the only reason why Ole Miss didn't beat Alabama last year is because Ole Miss had the top five worst defense in the country. Ole Miss gets two stops on defense in that game, and maybe, honestly, Ole Miss wins that game. Last year, Ole Miss, they were 120th ranked defense in college football. That's out of 124 teams. This year, through three games, 55th ranked defense in the country. Saban doesn't coach scared, and Saban knows how to fix problems quickly. But so does Lane Kiffin. Thanks for listening to Out of My League. If you like what you heard, be sure to like, share, and subscribe. Or follow me on Twitter and Facebook in the description link below.